the webcast. If you'd like to give us a call, you can give us a call as the phone number appears across the screen. And those of you who are viewing this on Channel 25, God bless you. You can also call us at this time. Uh, we have some spirit-filled prayer warriors who are just uh, waiting to touch and agree with you for your breakthrough. And as always, if you would like a copy of this broadcast of real, or really any of our messages, you can give us a call or even write us here at the church. Well, as always, let's welcome this national and international audience. And we're going to get right on into this. We're still in this series of teachings of, called Our Covenant of Wealth. Our Covenant of Wealth. And we're kind of coming down to, towards the end of it very soon. Now, those of you who've been following, we've already established that throughout the scriptures that not only uh, is it God who has given us the power to get wealth, but it's a promise that he established and made to Abraham. In Genesis, uh, uh, Genesis 12, he made it to Abraham and to his seed, and we've discovered that that seed translates uh, really to us who are in Christ. Now, to simply put it, uh, what was promised to Abraham those of us who are in Christ, we are heirs to those same promises. Amen. Galatians 3.29 clearly says that if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Then we've also established that one of the keys is really if you don't believe that you have a covenant of wealth, you're not going to be able to receive it. And that's no different than any of God's promises. If you don't uh, believe God's promises, you won't be able to receive God's promises. And a key thing to all of this is you've got to have the right mindset. Now, let's go back to 3 John 1 and 2. This has been our foundation scripture for uh, making sure our level of thinking is at a certain place. 3 John 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Now, one of the things we have also established about prosperity, it's not just limited to things. You know, prosperity, uh, as I said on the other day, it's not just defined by uh, cash, cars, condos, and clothes. <laughs> but to prosper, is simply having success in all areas of your life. So prosperity is not just limited to things, but we want to prosper uh, in our health. Obviously, we want to prosper in our relationships. You want to prosper in your ministry. You want to prosper on your job or anything that pertains to your life. You want to have success in it. But now, the real key to this scripture is even as thy soul prospers. In other words, uh, in the Greek, this means to grant a prosperous and expeditious journey or to lead by a direct, easy way. Or it means to cause to prosper. So even as your soul prospers or even as your soul grants a journey or grants an expeditious journey, or as your soul leads and directs. So in essence, this is basically saying it takes the soul to lead you on this journey of prosperity. Amen. Amen. And I ask that question, could we say perhaps the reason that uh, many of our lives is not prospering because our mind or our soul has not led us there? Because you can't go to a place where your mind has never been. Only a prosperous mind can lead you on a prosperous journey. And, uh, you know, and that goes with anything. You know, only a, a, a healed mind can lead you on a, a, on a healed journey. Amen. Amen. See, because life is going to be directed by your mindset. Amen. We said that the determining factor to any level of prosperity in your life is based on your mindset, your perception, your beliefs, or how you think. Why? Because you can't go beyond how you think. 
We also said the reason that uh, most people remain at a certain place in their life is because they never raise their level of thinking. You know, where some people are basically, now I don't believe there's a such thing as a standstill in life. Uh, either you progress or digress, you know, either you advancing or you're going backwards, moving forward or going backwards. But most people, they, they don't, uh, they, they remain in a certain place because they never raise their level of thinking. So you have to ask yourself, when was the last time you raised your level of thinking about something? When was the last time you increased your knowledge base? Now that's something we all can, can, can ask ourselves. When was the last time I raised my level of thinking about a particular thing? You know, when the last time I increased my knowledge base? You know, they, they, t they tell you, and, and this is a good thing, they, they tell you to really keep your brain really strong and going, learn a different word every day. You increase your knowledge base, just learn a different word every day. From a Christian standpoint, when was the last time you uh, uh, memorized the scripture? See, that's raising your level of thinking. You know, I understand the scriptures you already know, but when the last time you memorized a new scripture? You know, when, when is the last time you learned a new word? That's raising your level of thinking. We also said the direction of life is going to be dictated by the domination of a person's thoughts. I'll say that again. The direction of life is going to be dictated by the domination of a person's thoughts. That's really what the law of uh, Proverbs 27, 23 and 7 is about. For as he thinketh in his heart or in the mind of the heart, so is he. In other words, you're going to always move in the direction of what you think about the most. Whatever dominates your thoughts, that's the direction your life is going to go. We also said that uh, the mind is like the control center. In other words, the mind, I like to say, it, it's, it's like what a thermostat is uh, to a furnace system. You know, I just heard the system change right now because that was based on how the thermostat was set earlier. So the mind is like, the, like, like a thermostat, you know. Uh, 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 whatever the thermostat is, is set or programmed, the furnace is going to always respond to it. If you set the thermostat on heat, then the furnace is going to eventually respond and produce heat. If you set the thermostat on cool, then eventually the furnace is going to respond uh, and is going to pr pr present cool, all right? And it's the same thing with life. Your life will respond to the programming of your mind. Because all suggestions in life comes through the mind first. Anything that has been brought in your life, all suggestions, it comes through the mind first. And that's good or bad. We said that things don't just happen. There's no, really, there is no such thing really as an accident. Accident is a word that man made up or coincidence. Those are not God words. See, because if accident really exists, then that means it just happened. You know, in other words, uh, uh, that, that it's just a reaction and there was never an action. But we know to uh, every reaction there has to be an action. To every manifestation there has to be a seed. So there's really no such, and I know we use those words. What a coincidence. An accident. No such thing, really. Hmm. See, to every reaction, there has to be an initial action. And uh, 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 to, to, to every effect, there had to be a cause. Because things don't just happen. Now, I understand we may not always understand why. But there is always a cause behind every action. Because nothing just happens. Nothing just, like I said, I know we play with words of coincidence and, and accidents, but God never, there's really no such thing. 
And I know sometimes that's hard for us to receive because sometimes we just don't know. Sometimes we just don't know why, but there is a reason. There's a reason to everything. You know, that, that we know that in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, that there's a, th there's a time and a purpose under heaven for everything. So there's no such thing as things just happens. Hmm. Now, and that goes in everything it begins in the mind, from a good decision to a bad decision. It all begins in the mind. That's why I say it. The mind is like the control center. You know, and then we even learn uh, uh, even uh, uh, sin. You know, sin doesn't just happen. It's first conceived in the mind. Matter of fact, let, 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 let's go there. Let's go to James. Let's go to James. First chapter of James. First chapter of James, verse 13. He says, let no man say when he is tempted that I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither he tempteth he any man. Now that lets us know right there, God never tempts us with evil. You know, even when, when you, see, sometimes there's a play with words when it says God tests. Now, God never tests us with evil. God tests our obedience. God don't test you to see if you're going to do right or wrong. He doesn't put wrong in your path to test you to see how strong you are, either you're going to pick right or wrong. God only tests obedience. Because even when scripture said God tested Abraham, tested obedience, not, not to do wrong or right. It's not that. All right? So God never tempts us with evil, says neither tempteth he any man. But verse 14 says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust." And then entice. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin and sin, and then when it is finished, it brings forth death. So in other words, that the mindset will lead you and trap you on a sinful journey. Things just don't happen. It, it's that mindset. You know, it's first conceived in the mind. All right? Same process happened uh, in the story of the prodigal son. His mind led him on the journey uh, as far as where he went. Let, let's go there. Let's go to Luke, 15th chapter of Luke. I'm trying to just really get this in you so you really know how, how powerful that, that, that soul is. And it does the lead. 15th chapter of Luke, verse 11. And I'm going to read out of the ESV uh, translation. 15th chapter of Luke, verse 11 says, And he said, There was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. And then not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living, or the King James says riotous living, and when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. Then verse 17, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, and we know so on and so on. But see, if you look at the process, first of all, and this didn't happen overnight. You know, he, 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 he somehow got this in his mind, and his mind led him to want his portion. Even though that was totally out of order, and it was a disrespect and a dishonor to his father. 
Because generally, at, th at, th at this time, you know, you only got your portion once your father died. And at that time, it was more or less like, you know, I want my stuff now, kind of like, I wish you were dead. So this was totally out of order, and it was a, a dishonor to his father. But his mind led him there. Now, obviously, his mind is, is off, you know. His mind led him out of the house. and led him on this journey of riotous living. And then as a result, what? He was broke, spent all that he had, and then a famine comes in, in that country where he was at, in that land. Then his mind led him, it really, his mind led him to a lifestyle that he shouldn't have never been a part of. I know some folk like that, that their mind has led them to a lifestyle that they never should have even been a part of. Hmm. See, the same mindset that can lead a person from rags to riches is the same mindset that can lead a person from riches to rags. And it was this, this, this young boy, his, his mindset. But then what happened in verse 17? When he came to himself. You know, in other words, uh, his right mind came back. And his right mind came back and he led him back home where he's supposed to be. See, his, his mind got off. And you know when your mind get off, your life is going to get off. Your life get off, you're going to go in the wrong direction. Now, thank God that, that uh, 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 you know, he came to himself and did the right thing and went back. See, because it, 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 he, was, he was so off, you know, to get out there and then a famine. Ha See, it wasn't no famine in where his daddy was at. See, sometimes people think that was, no, nah, it was a famine where he was at. He spent all that he had and the famine got where he was at. And now here he is uh, working like a slave with the pigs and, and didn't even want to eat what the pigs I eat. And then he thinking, this, this is, you got to be kidding. My ser the, the servants at my daddy's house got their own room and their own bathroom. And here I am wanting want to, your folks, your mind can get you off get you in a direction, and get you in a life that you had no business being in. I can think of at least 10 people off the top of my head that I've seen that happen to, and to this day. And the thing about it, it wasn't no devil. I mean, the devil laughs about it. He encourages, of course. But see, the soul leads you to the journey. Same thing, that's really what happened to the uh, children of Israel when they didn't possess the land when they should have because of that mindset. Let's go there, let's go to Numbers, 13th chapter of Numbers. Thirteenth chapter of Numbers, verse 25. Now remember Moses had sent out uh, the leaders to, to, to spout the land that the Lord had given them. Because remember, this is part of the covenant. You know, he gave them the land. This is part of their land. Verse 25 says, And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And then they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land where you sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey. I like to say it flows with silk and money. 
And this is the fruit of it. In other words, here's the proof. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Now, now verse uh, 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 30 says, and Caleb stilled the people before more. In other words, Caleb had to interrupt it because the, these are these other leaders saying this. Said, yeah, it's all this and that, but sometimes, but, see, it, but is one of them words like, yeah, I said this, but now I'm going to say something kind of that just dismiss what I just said. I love you, but. See, I'm getting ready to say something. In other words, just this, you know, you my best friend, but. Some words that, yeah, I said it, but just dismiss it. And this is more or less what, what, what they did here. Say, yeah, you know, here, here's the fruit of it, all the, you know, and it's born with, with, with silk and money and this and that. Uh, uh, but nevertheless, but, or but the people, they strong, and the cities are walled, and this and that, and, and, and all these different folks are there, and this and that. Then Caleb had to quiet the people before more. See, because these leaders, you know, they stirring up something. They, 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 what they're, they're talking, they're giving them an image now. You know, it's almost like they got excited. Here's the fruit of it. they like, whoa, but... You know, it's like, like somebody said, you, you know what, uh, here's, here's the house for you, but you ain't going to be able to afford it. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're you going to get married, <laughs> uh, but you're going to be divorced in three weeks. Got their hopes up then, come down here. So uh, Caleb had to, listen, he, he, he had to quiet, hey, y'all, y'all shut up. You know, he said, listen, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. You know, there was no denial that the, that the giants were there and all, because it's supposed to be. Remember, at this time, Canaan is the best. And using your own imagination, if you think the best of something, you're going to think big. You know, if you had in your imagination the, the best house you could possibly live in, you ain't thinking about a three-room shack. And I'm not saying small houses are not good. That ain't, that's not what I'm saying. But if your imagination say, I want you right now to think of the best house you can live in, I, I don't see most of you thinking of something small. And maybe some of you are, I don't know. You ain't think it's small? So yes, the giants were there because it was the best. It was big. So he says, so he still the people said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Now that's one mindset right there. That's the right mindset. Now, it's like we didn't been there. We went there 40 days. We went out to check out everything. Looked at it. It's all that. And they looked. See, and Caleb and Joshua were like, oh, this, we got this. See, they were coming back with the report. Please, we, we got this. We, we, ain't no, we ain't no strategy. No, no. He said, let us go up at one. Let's do this right now. See, they had that right, that right mindset. When you see something and you know it belongs to you, you don't want to wait. You know, you, you know, you've been in, in, in bondage of Egypt for all these years. Then you get out. No, I don't want to wait another moment. And I don't want, hey, listen, I, I don't want to dry this raggedy cotton out another moment. I don't want to live in this roach infested, mice rat infested place. Not another day. Let's go up at once. I know some of you right now, you got the mindset. If, 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 if they say, listen, your house has been waiting for you, all paid and full, you would say, forget that. Some of you wouldn't even go back. 
You leave that cheap furniture there. I like. You. Say, can I go tonight? <laughs> see, once you see something that that's yours, that like, let's go up right now. Now, I ain't saying that everybody now. Some folk, they say, listen, you know what? You got $100 million. Most of you would not finish the work week out. <laughs> I know there's only two days left. I didn't say a million, I said a hundred million. I know your job cool, but most of you are, it ain't nowhere in the world you going back there tomorrow for that little pay. You call it because you're nice and you're Christian. So thanks, you know, it's been wonderful. Praise the Lord, but I will not be coming in any longer. Thank you. That's it. I ain't going back to say bye to nobody. Just... See, that's the mindset of let us go up at once. But then verse 31, but the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And what, 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 is it, what do they call this, this, this mindset? An evil report. They brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which uh, come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were we in their sight. Now, once again, 12 leaders were sent on an assignment with specific instructions. But what happened? Caleb and Joshua had the right mindset. Let us go up at once, possess it, for we're well able to overcome it. Then the other 10 leaders had the wrong mindset. We be not able to go against the people. They are stronger than we. Now, we know later what happened. Uh, uh, they ended up, as a result of this, they should have went in at that time. Now, some folks will say, well, that wasn't the time. Yes, it was, because if you read in the second chapter of Joshua, when Rahab said, listen, we was waiting on y'all to, to come and take us over. There was fear in our hearts, but they never showed up. So they were supposed to have went at that time. But now the, good, the thing here is even though uh, they ended up in the wilderness for 40 years, but that still was not Joshua and Caleb's destiny. Because after those 40 years, they eventually went into the promised land. Because God preserved them. Which kind of lets me know that even though someone else's decision can indirectly affect you, but it doesn't have to change your destiny. In other words, somebody else's journey don't have to be your journey. You know, folks around, they can make, they can make some bad decisions and, and it can affect you indirectly in a sense, but that don't have to be your final result. That don't have to be your destiny. Let me prove what I'm saying. Let's go to 2 Kings. I gave this example last time uh, about this widow woman. 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. Second Kings, the fourth chapter, uh, verse number one says, And there cried a certain woman of the wives of the son of the prophet unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did, did fear the Lord. In other words, he did love God, you know, because he's one of the prophet's ministers. But the creditor has come, to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. Now, for whatever reason, and I've said this before, uh, this was a minister who loved God, but for whatever reason, he died and left his family in debt. And that was not right. You know, sometimes, and we know this, you can have folks who, who they, they could be, 
They can be spiritual and love God, but they can lack in some other areas. See, everything is not Ebo Boshando. I'm all for it. As Apostle Paul, I speak in tongues as more than you all. But everything is not Ebo Boshando. And sometimes I've seen that over years. Church people, and they, they mean well. You know, they get caught up in the, uh, the, the Lord going, the Lord going. Well, you got to do something. Because we know in James 2, faith without works, without a corresponding action, is dead. So don't tell me you in faith and you trust in God and you don't have anything to back it up or to show. Hmm. So now that, that was a problem right there. You know, that he, he, you, you know, he, he, he's a minister, you know, and that'd be with anybody. You don't leave your family in debt if something happens to you. That's why uh, uh, we have options in today's society called insurance. You know, if you ain't reached that level yet, naturally, whatever, you have what's called insurance. Just in case. You know, just in case you can't save the $10 million. Just in case. I'm talking to the, the, the TV audience, too. Just get you some insurance if you don't. Don't be leaving your family in debt. And I've seen this happen over the years, and this is among Christians to have no money, no insurance, and got to raise money to bury somebody. You know that's not godly. And I didn't say people don't love God. Hmm. So here they are, the credit is coming to take both of the boys as slaves. Then Elijah said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Well, Elijah sends my husband was one of your ministers, and I'm a widow now. Where's the widow's fund? In other words, those of us who are in church, where's the benevolent fund? I've, I've heard people say that to me over the years, especially I can think of one particular who hadn't been in church, hadn't been here in, in, in <laughs> my God, probably a couple years. You know, and something happened to someone in their family. You know, and we, we'd be generous and like, okay, but don't y'all, don't, 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 don't we got a, but never, we? <laughs> we ain't seen we in over two years. <laughs> this is one of the moments that everything is not Ebo Boshando. So she didn't do that. So what shall I do for thee? Tell me what has thou in the house. Now you got to understand or kind of really read between the lines. He said, what shall I do for thee? I believe she said, man, man of God, you, what, what is God saying? Tell, tell me, you tell me. Tell me. Okay, well, what do you got in your house? She said, thine handmaid has not anything in the house except a pot of oil. Then he said, go, borrow these vessels abroad. Of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And then when thou come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and unto thy sons, and shall pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, shut the door upon her and upon her sons, and brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And then it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more, and then the oil stopped. See, the oil only stopped because there were no more vessels. Let's say she went and got a thousand vessels. Once a thousand came, it was over. But say if she'd have got a million vessels, that oil would have still kept going. So then he said, and then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go. Sell the oil, pay the, thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. See, in other words, this woman was not going to allow her husband's journey determine 
her journey. See, because for whatever reason, you know, her, her husband, he, 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 he knew that, that the finances weren't there. And she could have just said, oh, he left me. I guess the boy's got to be slavery. She went, no, no, this, this ain't going to be my journey. This, his decision has affected us indirectly, but this is not going to be my journey. I don't think some of you are missing it. This is even a husband and wife. You know, whatever reason, decisions he made, she like, this is not going to be my journey. This is not going to be my destiny. I hope somebody grabbing that. I understand you might be facing something because of the decisions of somebody else. But that does not have to be your journey. Now, it gets no closer than that than husband and wife. So if it gets no closer than that, it ain't no excuse your mama messed up. Your daughter messed up. Your aunt messed up. So she wasn't going to allow her husband's journey to determine her journey. Her mindset led her to the man of God. And as a result, what? She ended up on a journey of being debt-free and living a prosperous life. But I don't know what she sold the oil for. But it said, sell it, pay your debts, and live off the rest. Who knows? You never know what she did. You know, because she because obviously we know this was a supernatural. You know, we don't know what she sold it for. Pay your debts off. You now debt free, and live off the rest. See her mind. See 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 her mind. She could have had that poverty mindset. Where that benevolent fund? Or give me a little something to keep the creditors off me this month. All right, they off you this month. What you going to do next month? So her mindset led her on that journey. You see, a person's life is changed when their mindset is changed. And as I said, if your mind is off, guess what? Your life is going to get off. Your life as of today, right now, is only a reflection of what's been dominating your thoughts. Now, if that's true, then uh, if I don't like the direction of where my life is going, then I need to change the way I think. If I don't like the, way, the direction of where my life is going, then I need to change what I think. Because it's the soul that's going to lead me on the journey. So if I don't like the direction it's going, okay, first thing, I need to, ch I need to change my thoughts. I need to change the way I think. You know, if, if it looks like my life is direction is, is, is heading into this poverty or whatever, you know, I need to change my thinking. Or if it looks like I'm on a direction that I'm getting sick, I need to change my thoughts. If, I, if it looks like I'm getting on a journey of depression, I better change them thoughts. If it looks like I'm getting on a journey where fear is starting to come in, I need to change my thoughts. See, because nothing just happens. Things don't just all of a sudden manifest. See, remember, I said before, all suggestions in life, whether it's poverty, lack, sickness, disease, depression, fear, it's first conceived here. You know. So in other words, it, it, it begins here. It's not as if the stuff just happened. You're like, man, how I get here? Think back on your thoughts. That's why we're told in Scripture to cast down, 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, to cast down those imaginations, those images, those thoughts that tries to exalt, exalt or lift itself up against the knowledge of God. So if I don't like the direction where my life is going, I need to change how I think. See, and that, that's with anything in life. Because you, you, you can kind of see the course you're going. If you see, like, I don't, I don't like, you know, you, you know you. Who was, who was that? Was that Shakespeare said, tonight self be true? 
Now, whether he was super spiritual or not, I don't know, but it's true. <laughs> you know, never fool yourself. You know, that's why I'm a believer in always, we should always do self-inventory on a regular basis. You know, be true to yourself. If you know, man, the direction, I'm, 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 I'm kind of going in a direction I don't want to go in. Then I, I, need, I need to back up and change them thoughts now. That go with anything. You can start sensing when you, when you, when you, you, you start to not like somebody. You don't love somebody today and hate them tomorrow. That doesn't happen like oh, automatically. Or likewise, you, you don't just all of a sudden, you know, it could be your spouse. You love them today and all of a sudden you just hate them. No, that's not true. See, when you, you, you know when you're getting in a direction. Now, in order to stop that direction, stop that journey, I got to change, change my thoughts. And that's with anything. You know, you know when you're when you, you getting jealous. Now, in your mind, you don't, you don't like to think that of yourself. You know, but, but you know, and you, it be, like I said, be true to yourself. I ain't saying you got to put it on Facebook. I am jealous. I'm not saying that. But be honest with yourself. Like, man, I'm on a journey of being jealous of her or jealous of him. Now, to get off that journey, I got to change my thoughts. It looks like I'm starting to get fear about my money. I got to change them thoughts. You all still here? So this woman, her mindset, it, it did all of that. You know. Now, so your mind will lead you on a journey to where you're at. You don't just show up. You know, it, it, it leads you there over a period of time. Remember, decisions are seeds. Oh, yes, they are. And we all make decisions based on how and what we think. Every decision you make in life is a seed, and we know when a seed produces a harvest or a manifestation. So every decision you make, it is a seed. Now, let me quickly deal once again with how this mind works. We said that there are four manifestations of your mindset. Number one, your will. Number two, your emotions. Number three, your intellect. And number four, your imaginations. Four manifestations of the mindset, your will, your emotions, your intellect, and your imaginations. And this is why we say the mind is, is, is like the control center. So now what I need to do, I need to have my will, my emotions, and my intellect, and my imaginations all in sync in order to lead me on this journey of prosperity into my covenant of wealth. They have to all be in sync. You, you can't have one and not the other. They got to all be in sync. You know. You see, it's through uh, 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 that. We know that this covenant, it is God's will, but it's got to become my will. See, if it doesn't become your will, then it doesn't matter. You know. I mean, all of the promises of God, obviously, is his will, it's his will, but has it become your will? You know, it's his will that you be healed, delivered, and set free. But is it your will? You know, it, it's his will that, that you, 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 you prosper and be in health and so But is it your will? And you'll be surprised. A lot of folks, it's not their will. You know, I've seen people, some folks, they don't want to be well all the time. Now, that goes into some, some other uh, psychological issues. Because some folks like to be sick because that's the only way they can get some attention. It, it is. You know, I remember, and I used to do that as a little, when I was a little kid. You know, and I, I was sick for real, and, and, but, but, but then you get that special attention. And I didn't want to let it go. You know, my mother come up, oh, no, 
on and on, and then you get the, the ex, just the extra attention. Bring your food up to the bed. And then when you, when then you start getting well, <laughs> part of you don't want to do that. You want to, you know. And especially at a certain time, I was off from school. Oh, man, you didn't have to go to school. You got grown folk like that. Now, now, they don't want to get healed. They like that attention. You know, they get, if they get healed, they, they, want to be, they won't be able to get some of them benefits. You know, you get certain checks sometimes for certain ailments, mentally or physically. Now, all of a sudden, you Einstein. You don't want to be because you won't get that check no more. Did that go over somebody's head? See, some, <laughs> let me move on. See, some folks, they, they don't, they really don't want it. See, that's what I'm saying. Even though it's God's will, is it your will? Hmm. Then you have to always keep your emotions in check. You know, lack and poverty, it, it'll try to uh, creep in and, and manipulate your emotions. Especially with Christians, it'll try to manipulate it and give it your emotions. You know that rent is due. You know, church understand. They know building fund. Your intentions was to had a building fund money, but but you know that unexpected thing happens to start manipulating your emotions. Then your intellect. Your intellect has to comprehend that you are an heir to the blessing of Abraham. You know. Then, then, then your imaginations, you have to have or get the image of prosperity within you. In other words, you have to envision yourself prospering and living in your covenant. And you'll be surprised. A lot of people, they don't envision that. You know, I can be preaching this word, and I can tell some folks, not just here, but even if I'm on the road somewhere, but people, they, they, they just sit there like they can't envision. You know, some people can't even, in, they can't envision going past where they're at. I, I, just, I just can't envision having good health. You know, I, 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 can't, I can't envision living a, a certain amount of years. Can't envision. Hmm. So now, the, the, the will, your emotions, your intellect, and that imagination has to all be in sync. See, if you remember, that's really uh, what God did for Abraham, or what really what Abraham had to do concerning what God promised. Let's quickly go to Genesis 13, and we're going to wrap this up. Thirteenth chapter of Genesis, verse 14, says, And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, he says, Abraham, lift up now your eyes. Look from the place where thou art northward, southward, eastward, and westward. In other words, lift, lift up your eyes and look, look in all of these directions. For all the land which thou see, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. See, what's happening here, all of this was really to give Abraham a different image in his mind. Because remember, he gave him the promise of this and that, and then even the promise of Isaac and so on and so on. He said, listen, Abraham, you got, you got to give an Im get an image in your mind. This is really even what we know of as meditation. You, you got to get an image. I want you to look. Look in all directions. Look from where you're at. Don't look where you're at. Look from. 
So that's very key. key. You don't never want to look where you at, look from. Because if you look where you at, you like, man, I look from. Don't look at, look from. Somebody missing it. Stop looking at where you at, look from. So he's saying look from north, south, east, and west. For all the land that you see, to thee will I give it. Now, I don't, I don't know how long Abraham stood there and did it, you know. See, because if the Lord t- tell me that all the land you can see, I, I, get, I say, what? Let me look again. Give me some binoculars. <laughs> what do you call a thing? Not the binoculars, something bigger than a telescope. Give me a telescope now. I don't know what get bigger than a telescope. And then I'm going to look at all, it just look like this. Then go on, all, the, all that you see, I have given it to thee and thy seed forever. And then he says, and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. So if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. See, he's given Abraham an image, something to envision. You know, I, 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 I'm giving all the land you see until your seed. And your seed, hey, if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be known. He's given him an image. Then he says, arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. So all of this was to give Abraham a different image in his mind. So now, my question is, where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself at concerning prosperity and your wealth, your covenant of wealth? You know, and you got to be honest with you. Where do you see yourself with this? We've been teaching this the last few weeks now. Where do you see yourself in this? You know, not, not, you got to get beyond just this sounds good. See, because sometimes we can hear this word and we can applaud it, but, but it's still like, like, a, like a fantasy. Like, wow, that would, be, that would be great. Boy, but do you really envision yourself? You know, on the, on the, on the, on the way here, uh, I purposely d- drove to a particular area that uh, we would b- had b- believed God where we were going to live at. And I, and I looked, and I remember going back years ago with that. And first, we would go and look at all these places. And, and at that time, you know, a particular neighborhood, folks, they, they, leave, their wind- they leave their shades open. <laughs> See, where, where I come from, you ain't le- at, at night, you ain't leaving no shades open. You leave them open in the daytime, but not at night. And we were driving these areas. Everybody got, it's nighttime. You can see all through the house. See folks walking around, these folks at their dining table, eating, just being so happy. <laughs> and this is years ago, and at that time, it was kind of like, wow, you know, man, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be but until it actually got in here, envisioning, that's going to be us. I see myself. Now, this ain't just no figment of my imagination or no wishful thinking. I envision myself in my house with, with, at night with all the shades open. I can't even count them now. Open. And somebody driving by looking and seeing me yeah. eating croutons and drinking tea or, you know, whatever. <laughs> See, you got to envision yourself in that. See, it's got to go beyond just that, that man, this, this would, boy, this would really be great. So how do you envision? 
How do you envision this being part of your life? You know, what was promised to Abraham, that this, this belongs to you. See, and don't think the only way you can get there is either somebody got to leave you some money or you know it's not going to come by your job. Because I said this years ago. There's not enough money you can make on your job to live the way God has called you to. It's not going to happen. See, I'm saying envision this. I'm not envisioning some if you have a better job. And I went through that years ago thinking, well, if I, had a, if I made a certain amount of money. No. Because a certain amount will limit you anyway. You know, oh, if I made 100000 eh, please. Yeah. Now, some of you who there and close, you know it ain't. You hear some of them amens. It ain't what you think. It's not. Okay, if I made a half a million, it's still going to limit you to half a million. And once you get out to a certain point, you realize that ain't that much. I'm purposely trying to jack some of you all up. See, you envision this. It has nothing to do with what's in the bank account or in your pocket. See, keep in mind, there's a set point in all of us. And in order for us to change that set point, it's going to take the word. You know. See, the word, remember, it, it's like a mirror. You know, we read this word and we, we, we got to look at it like a mirror, like who God says, well, we got to see ourselves like that. And we got to change that, that, that set point. It's what I call, uh, you, you got to get into that subconscious, that subconscious mind. You know, where it just becomes, this is, this is part of you now. In other words, this is more real to you than what's happening on the outside. And like I say, I'm not getting, don't, don't just get caught up in the things. I'm talking about anything that affects your life. You know, not just stuff, having, having, uh, 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 having peace. You got to envision that because we know we live in a world, it is chaotic. Stuff is happening. Stuff is happening in, in my family just like yours. That if you allow it, it can get you in left field. But you got to envision that regardless of the chaos, regardless of what's going on, that I got peace. Everybody around you may be crying. They may be doing, doing this and that, but you got, you got to envision that. You know? Envision not just being healed, but after you get healed, envision health. Envision feeling healthy, not just sometimes. You know, we used to say years ago, thank the Lord for a reasonable portion of health and strength. I don't want reasonable. The reasonable, we, we just tolerate. In other words, it becomes acceptable. Feel okay today, but not so good tomorrow. No! I don't want reasonable. I don't want to be able to just cope, get along. See, and we can, li we can live our life. We know that you get used to anything. Oh, you know, this leg, I, I, I just get, get along with this. This arm, I can't raise it this high, so I just don't. My neck always be, you know. And we get so used to it. You got envision. My leg is fine. I can play kickball, I can play soccer, whatever it is. My arms are fine, I can do jumping jacks, I can do pull-ups, whatever. You got to envision that. So in order to change that mindset, you've got to pull up all roots, all roots of poverty and lack. And I said it last Sunday, Jesus said in Matthew 15, 13, 15 that every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. You got to root it up. In and everything that's contrary uh, uh, to what God has promised, you got to get that stuff out of you. Now, it's been planted. It's been planted in all of us. You know, 
It's been planted by what we've learned, what we've seen, our experiences, what we've been taught, what we've observed, all of that. But in and everything that, that, that God didn't plant it, that's contrary to the promise, I got to root it up. And we'll talk about that next time. I'm out of time. This has been Better Life Lessons. We'll see, see you next Wednesday. Uh, matter of fact, next Wednesday is going to be Let's Talk About Marriage and the Family. We're asking everybody, those who are viewing this, to uh, look at the, we the uh, 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 various uh, 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 websites because we've got some exciting information coming up very soon for you. Come on, let's thank God. <laughs> Hallelujah.